Godzilla games are rare today. In fact, we only ever get crappy mobile games. I guess no one wants another Unleashed, Save the Earth, or Destroy All Monsters Melee. Which sucks, cause I'd rather have that than Godzilla 2014. Godzilla is approaching the generator. The generator is losing power. The generator is losing power. Godzilla is approaching the generator. The generator is losing power. Godzilla is approaching the generator. The generator is losing power. Godzilla is approaching the generator. The generator is losing power. Godzilla is approaching the generator. The generator is losing power. Outside of a cameo and a lackluster of a price DLC for Gigabash, we don't have any other real Godzilla stuff in gaming today. So I decided to check out any Japan exclusive games to see if we Americans missed out on anything good. But of course, like per usual, I see a game, think it'll be good, and it turns out to be yet another bad game. Remember Godzilla 2014? Probably not. But for those who need a refresher, Godzilla is approaching the generator. The generator is losing power. Now, do you remember? If not, you're lucky. That game sucked. It was also the last Godzilla game we got in the West. And no, mobile gotcha games don't count. This game was the original Godzilla 2014, except it's called Godzilla Generations, and was for the Sega Dreamcast. Back in the year 1998, developed by General Entertainment Co., published by Sega Enterprise LTD. Also, there's no kaiju battles or anything, and you can only play as Godzilla, or the worst option. Mecha Godzilla. You just walk around slowly, attempting to destroy the entire city, each level playing the same, and yes, there's nothing else to do. No fighting Mechagodzilla, Mothra, King Ghidorah, Gigan, Angry Anus, Space Godzilla, Destroya, Rodan, or anything. The controls are truly god awful. Not only does this make Resident Evil 1 play like Modern Warfare, it feels like the worst controlling game I have ever played to date. If Resident Evil had tank controls, Godzilla Generations has septic tank controls. No matter where you look, no matter the camera angle, you can only move forward by pushing up on the analog stick. This is disorienting, as the camera shifts so often and chases you like Code Veronica or Outbreak 1 and 2. At times, it's near impossible to see where you're going. I run off the map constantly getting yelled at by the game. The camera is just non-stop fighting me. I need to see where I'm walking but can't. The camera also stays in place following you as you get closer. This in turn leads tons 
of moments where you cannot see anything but Godzilla's thick thighs. Damn, boy! Damn, boy! He's thick! Boy! That's a thick ass boy! Damn! Ba -ba! I can barely even tell where the missile trucks and tanks are. Trying to shoot them with Godzilla's breath is near impossible, and I just hate this game. After five minutes, I wanted to stop playing. But I got to level four before rage quitting to see what else this game had to offer. Your goal in the five levels included in the game is to destroy the entire city. Every single building, every single tank and missile truck, and every single tree. What? What the fuck? Yes, you must step on every single tree to clear the level. You're on a timer of about 12 minutes in normal mode. If you destroy the entire city, you get a better ranking. That's it. There's no unlockables or anything like that. You just have to destroy the entire city as fast as possible with a variety of attacks. Those attacks are Atomic Blue Breath, Atomic Red Breath, and Tail Swing. That's it. That's all you get. You cannot run, jump, use your fists, let alone even kick. So yes, much like Godzilla 2014, everything is incredibly slow, you move so slow, it takes roughly 20 plus seconds to get across the level. It's just a slow paced, clunky game of destruction, with nothing fun happening during the gameplay. I mean, maybe if I was a little kid this game would appeal to me, but as I get older, I expect more from games, so this might be like one of those, oh this is a Godzilla game for the little kids, but even then, you think little kids are going to know how to play a freaking worst controlling Resident Evil Godzilla game? Of course, if you can even tell where you're going, as the camera barely moves till you're off screen, this is Resident Evil, but a million times worse. Those games are playable. Capcom knew what they were doing. That's why Resident Evil is a tyrant of a franchise. That's the joke. But here, you have to fight the camera trying to find every single little tree trying to find what portion of the building that's still standing locating the military to step on them or waste your atomic breath attacking getting hit non-stop it's just awful especially when you realize your ranged attack has a short range so when you think Oh, I'm in range, I'm gonna be able to blow up entire buildings with atomic breath. BAM! You missed. Yes, you have to destroy each tree and piece of a building. Each building comes in a single or several parts. This can be annoying as you walk into a baseball stadium hoping to have to take you have to actually take it apart piece by piece.
but it can get but it gets worse with these bloody trees especially those on the border of the level since you take forever to turn around this leads you to leave in the playable area getting yelled at by the game hoping you make it back in time before the 10 count reaches zero There is no real threat outside of the military, camera, and boredom. Where's the giant monster fights? They don't exist. You can see monsters in the loading screens, heck, they even show the abomination 1998 American movie Godzilla. That says everything regarding what little quality this piece of shit has to offer. The game is just boring forgettable and god awful to play. It's truly the worst Godzilla game I've played and reviewed to date. It's worse than Godzilla Unleashed for the PS2, which had nothing new to it outside of a story. Meanwhile, the Wii version had new kaiju, but worse controls. This game is also worse than Godzilla Domination for the GBA, which suffered from bad controls in combat plus the lack of kaiju. Godzilla Generations truly is a terrible game. The King of Monsters deserves better. There appears to be about three game modes. Normal, which we've already covered, Time Attack, and some weird mode we'll get to after this. So what is Time Attack? It's literally the same mode as Normal. But, you have even less time to destroy an entire city. It's got awful and I cannot see the appeal. Let's move on already. The some weird mode is entirely in Japanese. Also nothing works as I tried pressing every button on my controller to only get nothing. The only button that works is the back button. At first I thought this was going to be the versus mode or something else, I don't know. I just wanted to have some fun with this game, but instead I felt like I was at a college seminar. So this mode is worthless. What else does Godzilla Generations have to offer us? Well, there is only one other mode and I figured it was the options screen, cause normally the bottom menu is a settings menu or quit button. Instead, I got probably the best part of the game here. This is a theater mode where we can watch clips from various Toho movies over the decades. Is that what this is? Honestly, that's probably the most exciting thing so far and that's just sad. Obviously not playing them for copyright reasons. My disappointment is immeasurable, and my day is ruined. The music is okay, at least they got the theme right, as it seems to be literally from the movies. All the music is literally from the movies, I swear, and it's good. But that's probably the only good thing I can say, really, about this game and theater mode. There's nothing else to talk about, as this game is incredibly lackluster and boring. Even though there's a sequel that came out one year later, I don't think I'll be covering it. I just wanted to find some hidden gems, but instead, all I got was yet another ruptured septic tank catapulting fecal matter into the sky above me. Oh, that's nasty. 
At the end of the day, Godzilla Generations is a garbage game that's not worth playing. Unless of course you're a Godzilla fanboy who just loves everything Godzilla while autistically screeching on the official Godzilla subreddit whenever someone doesn't agree with you. They should have just made a basic fighting game with city destruction being part of the gameplay as you fight the kaiju instead. Otherwise known as Godzilla Destroy All Monsters Melee for Nintendo GameCube and Xbox, which came out not that much later in 2002. Anyways, that's it for this video. See you all later. So why are you here? Well, I'm here to review yet another Godzilla game exclusive to Japan. This will be the third one after Godzilla Monster War for Super Nintendo and Godzilla Generations from Dreamcast. Yeah, but why are you really here? <sighs> to crap on yet another bad Godzilla game for yet another bad Sega Dreamcast game because I'm the king of negativity as most of my reviews are not positive because I keep finding bad games that I thought were going to be good let alone were hidden gems. There you go. So today we're looking at the sequel to Godzilla Generations. This is Godzilla Generations Maximum Impact developed by General Entertainment and published by Sega in the year 1999. Oh. Holy shit, that was 25 years ago. A completely different style game from the first. Did they improve on anything from the first game? Did they actually make something good? Well, obviously not. That's why I said to crap on yet another bad Godzilla game just a minute ago. <laughs> My lizard. While the first Godzilla Generations was a simulation of Godzilla, being a bit like a toy box where you can play as Godzilla or Mecha Godzilla, destroying cities with the worst controls and camera ever invented, this game is a completely different style of game. This time, you can only play as Godzilla in a single mode and on rails. Say what? Yep, they decided to make this one a single player only rail shooter. Which makes no sense. Why would you make a Godzilla game a rail shooter? A platformer? Okay, sure. The Game Boy game was bad, but at least it was more playable. Why a rail shooter though? It just makes no sense. This means you cannot directly control Godzilla as he moves forward slowly through each level, blasting military tanks, jets, and helicopters until you get to the end and then face a boss. The boss fights themselves are a whole different breed of pure agonizing experiences. This game has some the simplest controls. It's literally just the analog stick, A for attack, B for block, and X for roar, and Y to switch the camera. Now I know what you're thinking. Where's the other form of attacks? There isn't any. Oh great. Honestly, if it wasn't for the lack of content, the awful targeting system, block button not being that responsive, and the lack of camera control on top of the poor draw distance, it might have been decent. But first, this! Since you only have four options with these controls, attack, block, roar, and camera switch, you might be wondering, how does your breath attack work in this game? Like any other Godzilla game, you hold the button to charge and build up for a longer, more powerful attack. Then you let go of the A button to fire at whatever you had targeted. If nothing 
it was a waste. If only one thing, it was a waste. The one and only means of fighting is such a chore and overall boring experience. If there was at least a tail attack, a punch, a bite, or kick even, maybe things could have been better, but at that point, we're moving it to destroy our monster's melee and its sequel's territory. Alongside that, you get block, run, and grab buttons, to which I'll never get tired of watching Godzilla toss kaiju like pizza dough before swatting them with his tail. <laughs> Pizza time. When you get hit, your attack is cancelled. In turn, it leaves you vulnerable to more attacks. Can I just have a break? Can I just have one break? It's very annoying how the so-called king of monsters can be easily distracted by anything to not fight back, leading to a never-ending death loop. As you get hit, Godzilla flinches. The enemy keeps attacking. Godzilla get hit, gets hit and flinches. It's a never-ending nightmare that you can find yourself in if you're not careful. Otherwise, it's just annoying being interrupted all the time, especially when you want to target something and it doesn't work. Worst enemies in this game outside of bosses is easily the tanks that just keep shooting at you, not giving you any wiggle room to blast them right back. God, I hate these guys. Keep a close eye on the radar for the red dots. Those are the tanks, except sometimes they can shoot you before they appear on the radar. Then you have to get within range to blast them as Godzilla's breath is so weak. Must be a chain smoker era of the lizard. Everyone at home? Are you sitting? I mean, probably weird if you were standing watching this. I mean, what do you, what do you, got, you got some sort of standing desk? I think you're better than me, don't you? Oh, just, I gotta leave, okay? No, we just started. Come on, man. Listen, listen, there's a lot to see in this life. Not wasting it here. The on rail sections of with city destruction always has Godzilla moving forward, giving you no real control as you just move side to side, target military vehicles. <laughs> This means if you're not quick enough, the tanks will blast you non-stop. And there's also certain buildings you don't want to walk into, like the gas containers. You cannot slow down nor speed up. The only times you will stop is when you get hit. Otherwise, just swing Godzilla's ahead around trying to target far away fast moving jets and helicopters with a very low draw distance. The targeting system is about as finicky as it can get. Like a tweaker program this gameplay mechanic, as half of the time when you point at something, it doesn't register with a lock on. But when it does, it's still a pain cause Godzilla will go after a certain number of targets. Why? Why? Cause Godzilla's breath is his only attack, therefore he builds up his attack, then shoots the ground for a few seconds before finally going for each target based on when you targeted them and wasting his breath in between each target as he hits the air or ground. <laughs> there 
there's a dodge slash block button that barely functions. Most of the time when you press it, Godzilla just stands there like an idiot. Guess he took after Gohan, huh? <laughs> oh, it's funny because it's true. This will lead you to dying constantly. You can barely dodge any attacks, even more so in the normal on rails levels, where Godzilla just keeps moving forward, allowing tanks, helicopters, and jets to blast him, which doesn't take much to kill the so-called king of the monsters. Like, fuck this shit. Just fucking, you know? I ain't give shit, it's a fucking show. You cannot heal in this game. Once you get hit, that's all the health you will have for the rest of the entire level. That includes the boss fight. You only heal when moving on to the next level after each on rail section and boss fight. Why did they think this was a good idea? This kept leading me to die and during every boss fight except Mothra, making it through the annoying tanks that are never in range in time for you to target and actually hit them, allowing them to attack you non-stop. For some reason, you're the only one that can be stopped when using your one and only attack. Like why? Why can the bosses interrupt me? when I'm trying to attack, but I can't do the same to them, even for full charge. Once you die, you only have a few continues, then it's game over. That's right, a single player game has a limited amount of continues, like it's an arcade game. Guess Sega thought I could give them quarters through the internet, or through my console or whatever. You're stupid. Hey. Your first boss in this game is Biolante. gonna lie, I love this little guy. Their roar is so cute. In fact, it's even cuter in Godzilla Monster War for SNES. This boss fight was easy the second time after I learned to avoid their chomp attack that kills you with no way to fight it off. After that, the second try was a cakewalk. Oh boy, here we go. The moment this game started to sour for me, besides the fact that I thought the boss fights would play differently. They don't, by the way. It's still an on-rail section. Anyways, King Ghidorah, also known in this game as King Douchebag. This bastard likes to fly around non-stop, never letting you target him. In turn, this leads you to being left open to his attacks. <laughs> oh 
Also, you cannot interrupt their attack nor block it. Why? I don't why. Why is all the It just it's just an annoying battle that took me three tries to get through. Each time my head hurt more with an occasional vein bulge on my neck. Calm down. The best part about this fight is I can take off his heads. <laughs> Darn, that's awesome! That's really awesome! The easiest boss in this game I got to was Mothra. Well, duh! Her larva were more of a challenge beforehand, but that was because of the god-awful targeting system. Meanwhile, the moth bitch just flies around, barely doing anything to me. By the end of the fight, she decides to be a total bitch by going down and then attacking me thinking I won. last boss I got to experience was possibly the worst, which is saying something after King Douchebagadora. That's funny. You're funny. This guy looks like if Mechagodzilla was pimped out by those who make Gundams. I never liked Gundam. Blasphemy! Ah! This guy likes to zoom all over the place, not letting you target him. In turn, he hits you with all kinds of attacks. I really really hate this boss, especially when it just flies off screen. Now you'd think, if you can't hit him, he can't hit you, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this motherfucker can hit you at any distance so long as you're within the hitbox for his attacks. In the end, after trying for a second time, I just gave up with this game. He's just too much to handle on top of the bad controls. Imagine trying to fight Melina in Elden Ring with controls that of Resident Evil 1 from 1996. Oh my god, no! The best part about this fight was the potential it had during editing. After getting attacked by his grapple hooks, this came to mind. So outside of the main mode, what else is there? You only have two options, the main game or settings. That's it. That's all you get. But, but why? There's no other choices, unlike in Generations 1 where you had the main game, time attack in some weird mode that I couldn't get to work. Meanwhile, this game has nothing but the main mode, which just pits Godzilla against several kaiju with Unreal levels in between each fight. Hell, there isn't even a gallery to check out various Godzilla media. That is sucks. The best thing about this game is the music. Why is the music so good? It could be used in a nightclub. The various tunes were used during this review for a reason. It's got potential for other uses as well. Oh no, oh no, oh no.
I, I'd like to cancel my subscription. There's no real way to control the camera, only select between two options with the Y button. I get the Dreamcast controller sucks. <laughs> Man, wouldn't it be nice to use the left and right triggers to rotate the camera around? Especially during boss fights? Oh wait, that actually sounds like a good idea. Sega wouldn't like that one bit. <laughs> this game has no multiplayer options whatsoever. Not even a versus or co-op mode. Think about it for a second. Wouldn't this style of game be more enjoyable with a split screen option? Instead of Mothra being a boss, she could be controlled by player 2, and her and Godzilla can just go around wreaking havoc. Now that sounds like a fun time. It would still be a mediocre game, but at least it wouldn't be as droll. At the end of the day, Godzilla Generations Maximum Impact is a garbage game well worth not playing. It's somehow even worse than the first game. Well, that was a simulation sandbox for Godzilla fanatics. Okay, okay. This is a generic on rails third person shooter with the worst controls and mechanics I've ever seen in a rail shooter. This steaming pile of fucking shit has only one good thing going for it the music. And that says it all. A Godzilla game that has only one positive thing for it being the music. Will you do that? You tell them what I did. I don't give a damn, because I got news for you. I'm glad we never got this, these shit games in the West. Japan, you could do better than this. Get your shit together. Well, that's it for yet another series of games for another future compilation. Plus, the language barrier this time wasn't really there, as a lot of this game was in English. Go figure. King Kong ain't got shit. Man, why is the Sega Dreamcast such a shitty-ass console? No wonder why Sega was going bankrupt. Also didn't help with Shenmue 1 and 2, which I'll eventually get to with their PC ports on Steam. Oh my God. <laughs> Till then, I'll get to finishing up the fishing games for Dreamcast, and then one last game for the Dreamcast for a while, before walking away from this awful console. Just like I did with Nintendo 3DS and Nintendo 64. Good for you. Good for you. Oh, thank God this one is over. Anyways, that's it for this video. See you all later. Don't you mean, oh my Godzilla? Thank you!